Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Spirit of Truth Ministries. I'm Pastor Kevin. I hope you are ready for another powerful worship service today that we have because there is a word from the Lord. Not the one who's going to be bringing it this morning is going to be my, not only my, my uh, partner, my wife, my co-pastor, my assistant pastor, my executive pastor, Pastor Dwella Malone is going to be bringing the word this morning. So I hope you are ready to get another powerful word because I know is going to be powerful. So let's uh, go before the Lord in prayer. But before we do that real quick, just a little bit of announcements. Remember every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. we have our, our Saturday morning prayer call and the number's right here on the screen. You could be able to join us each and every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. for a powerful hour of prayer and prophecy that we go forth uh, in our time of corporate prayer every Saturday morning. And if you have not yet done so, make sure you go over to our YouTube channel, Spirit of Truth Ministries, and make sure you go ahead, like, share, and subscribe over there. And you can catch us there uh, anytime we go live. And even uh, you can catch the replays and some of our previous messages and stuff. And so we have some announcements that's gonna be coming up right after the prayer, but let's go before the Lord real quick. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come before your throne room again, oh Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this day today, Oh God, just be giving us the strength, the breath of life that we need on today to do what it is you called us to do, Father God. Lord, we just ask this morning, oh God, that you just strengthen us today, Lord God. Open up our eyes and open up our ears of understanding, Lord God, that we might be able to receive a word from you, oh God. Lord, we just ask that you just touch Pastor Dewella this morning, oh God. Lord, touch her right now, oh God, your prophet, oh God. Lord, let the word that you have given her, oh God, not fall upon deaf ears, oh God, but let it hit the mark, oh God. Lord, we know oh God, that you are speaking in this very hour, oh God, and you have sent forth your messengers in the earth, oh God. And we thank you for this time, oh God, because we know that your word will be fulfilled, oh God. We just thank you. We ask you to continue to bless our families, oh God, each and every one of us, oh God, those who are even watching us live this morning, and even those who are going to watch the replay, Lord God. Lord, we just ask you to strengthen each and every one of them today, oh God, and even for the rest of this week, oh God. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we worship you, Lord God. And all these things this morning, we pray your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. So I'm ready to get in it. So before we get there real quick, we have some announcements coming up of some things that Spirit of Truth Ministries will be having upcoming here in the future. So make sure you pay attention to those announcements and make sure you stay tuned to our social media channels where we have more announcements coming forth. And also, if you have not yet done so, make sure you go to your app store and download, download Faith Life. Faith Life is a Christian social media network where Spirit of Truth Ministries is on that network where you can go and follow our ministry, get any announcements that we have that'll come directly from the ministry. And so it's a great little app you can put on your phone. It's just like Facebook, but only for Christian organizations, so churches and so forth. So yeah, make sure you go ahead and get that real quick. The address is right here on the screen where you can download it and make sure you go there and like Spirit of Truth Ministries and stuff so you can stay abreast of everything that we have. So right after this and these announcements, you'll help Pastor Dwella Malone. God bless you. I'm so used to coming in and doing the welcome, but I think Pastor Kevin did a really great job this morning of opening us up. Amen. Thank you so much to uh, Bay for that introduction. That was very nice. Uh, I am a little bit nervous uh, because a pastor put me on the spot to um, speak today. Um, and 
But the word says, be ready in season and out of season. Amen. So, and you can't go wrong with the word of God. Amen. So I, I already have a word that the Lord had actually kind of put in my spirit. All I had to do was go find um, the applicable scripture. Amen. And so I'm just going to go forth with what God has uh, imparted in me um, and given me instructions for, for this uh, time that we're living in right now. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and pray again. Amen. Uh, before I get started, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless Bless you. We honor you. We glorify your name. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing now, Father God, for what you're going to do, Lord God, Father, and what you've already done for us. We thank you, Lord God, that it is not by uh, accident, oh, Father God, or coincidence that we find ourselves in this very place, in this very time that we're in, God. So I thank you, Lord God, that you have strategically orchestrated, Lord, everything that is happening in and around us, Father. I pray, Father, that our eyes will be open, that our ears will be open, that will be uh, uh, receptive, Father God, to the thing that you have to say to us, to the thing that you want to convey to us, Lord, that your spirit would just move upon this, this broadcast, Father God, even through the replay, Lord. I pray, Father God, that something will be said, Lord, um, Father, that would, that would just penetrate the hearts of men, Father, whatever it is that you need to speak to your people, whatever you need to say to them, Father God, however you need to say it, Lord. I pray, Father God, right now that you increase in me and I decrease in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Move me out of the way so that your Holy Spirit can, can move, Father God, and flow in the name of Jesus, Lord. So we, Father God, cover this broadcast, Lord, and this word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so the word that the Lord has given me um, for this morning is called the time of the Lord's favor. The time of the Lord's favor. Amen. Um, and before I actually get into the word, I'll tell you, we are going to go to Isaiah 61 if you want to go ahead and get that scripture ready. But I'm going to be um, actually reading something first before we go to the scripture. So you can just get that ready. But uh, the time of the Lord's favor um, and uh, just earlier this month, actually on the 1st of um, February, um, the Lord had me release a um, newsletter to some of my subscribers. Um, I released this, this newsletter uh, to some worshipers and the name of uh, the title of the newsletter was It's Your Time. It's your time. Amen. And so it's going to tie right in what we're talking about today, uh, the time of the Lord's favor. And so I'm going to just read it to you. Um, it's your time. That's right. You have waited prayed, fasted, cried, and watched others go ahead of you. And now it's your time. It's a time of revealing for the worshipers. Those of you um, who have held on to the faith, and felt that your good deeds went unnoticed. God has seen you and is calling you forth. This is your time to rise and shine. Many counted you out and you may have even counted yourself out, but God has been right there the whole time cheering you on when others couldn't see or understand. Some laughed at your ideas that seemed unreachable, but God said you can do all things through Christ. Some visions are not for others to understand. They are shown to us so we will implement what is needed in the earth. For those discouraged by family, Joseph's brothers threw him into a pit, but that didn't stop the prophecy from coming to pass. You can find that in Genesis 37, 23 through 24. And King David was deliberately passed over because he didn't look the part. You can find that in 1 Samuel 16, 10 through 12. And even after all that you have endured, the Lord is saying, now is your time. Amen. And I, I, I added a verse here at the end in Isaiah 60, 1 and 2, and it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the deep darkness and the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. And again, that's Isaiah 60, one and two. And so about five years ago, um, the Lord gave me a word and, and the word was, um, your light has come. Your light has come. Five years ago, um, which would have been 2017, I preached a word called your light is coming. I preach from that very uh, passage of scripture in Isaiah um, 60. And so I believe what the Lord has done, how he has really set this thing up is that during that time, five years ago, the Lord was calling 
worshipers to arise. He was calling his people to arise. He was actually calling them to arise and get prepared, right? Um, because there had been um, some things that went on even in that time that was considered to be a darkness, a gross darkness that had covered the earth. And so the Lord was telling his people, he, was, he sent a messenger to tell his people, okay, come on, get up out of your slumber, arise and shine, your light has come. And I believe that was just the, uh, the prelude to what God is getting ready to say today, now in the year of 2022, the time of the Lord's favor. So now we're going to go ahead and go to Isaiah 61. And this is, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. I really like the New Living Translation. Um, but when I looked at the King James Version, there were some very strategic words in there I wanted to pull out. So we're going to go there. Um, and we're actually going to read, I was only going to do through verse 9, um, but we're going to read the entire uh, chapter there. Okay. It's only 11 verses. Uh, so verse one, it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now the Greek version of that text reads the blind will see. Okay. Uh, verse two says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The New Living Translation says to tell the time of the Lord's favor. So that's what the, where the uh, title comes from. OK. And the day of vengeance of our God to co to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. And they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame, for your shame, ye shall have double and for your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double everlasting joy to uh, shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering and I will direct their work in truth and I will make an everlasting covenant with them and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that ye, uh, all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Please remember that I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garment of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in to uh, into spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Amen. Hallelujah. That is really, really good word. So God bless you um, for going through that entire thing with me. Amen. I said, oh, wow, there's only a couple more verses left. So why don't we just read the whole thing? Right. And so I'm going to go back and break this down. We'll probably only get to verse eight or nine. I might not be able to do the entire thing, but I, I'm going to do my best to um, do what God has uh, commissioned me to do today. Amen. Regarding the time of the Lord's favor. Now, so in verse two of this passage, um, it actually remember, I told you it reads different in the New Living Translation. So uh, in verse two, it says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Um, but in, in the New Living Translation, it says to tell the time of the Lord's favor. Amen. And so I wanted you to see where that title came from. The word acceptable in verse two also means favor. Amen. It means delight. It means desire. Uh, it means good and it means will. 
to the will. Amen. And so uh, basically what this scripture is saying is so uh, so it is now the time of God's will. It is now the time of the Lord's will. So what is his will? His will is the plans he has for us. So this is twofold, right? His will is the plans he has for us. And his will is also that we obey what he commands to assist in the plan coming to pass. I'll repeat it. So his will is the plans that he has for us, not our plans, not our agenda, but the plans that he has for us. Uh, but it is also that we obey what he commands in order to assist in the plan coming to pass. Amen. So basically we have to do our part. Yes, this is the time of the favor of the Lord. This is the year of the acceptable year of the Lord. But what God is saying is that in order for it to be an acceptable year that I'm bringing or the favor of the Lord can't be brought unless you are obeying his will. Amen. When we divert from the plan, we don't experience the Lord's favor, but obeying his will brings the favor. Amen. So we have to continue to stay on the path, on the journey, on the plan that he has for us. And if you don't yet know the plan or the will that God has for you, then you need to dig deeper. You need to go into, go into his word. You need to see what the word says about you. You need to begin to pray. Prayer always opens up uh, a doorway, right? It always opens up a place for which God can speak. And when he speaks, he'll send you to the, to the scripture. He'll send you to the verse. He'll say something. And what he says is going to line up with his word because he never speaks anything outside of his word. So when it lines up with his word, you're going to be able to go and find the scripture that talks about what he just said to you in prayer. Amen. I'm preaching already. That was good. Think about it this way. When you favor someone, you give them your approval and support, right? So whatever they need, whatever push they need, uh, if they need a push for the mission or whatever it is they need, you make sure that you try to support them however you can. I was just talking to my husband the other day about my son and how he's so dedicated to what he's doing in sports, in school. And even for a time, you know, his grades weren't at a certain level. And so he wasn't able to play for some weeks. But even though he wasn't able to play, he still understood that he couldn't divert from the plan because he wouldn't have favor when he went back. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so for the three week period that he couldn't play, he still was going to his practices on time. He was doing the thing that he needed to do because he was what he was studying to show himself approved, even in the sport. Amen. And so he made sure that he kept his, his self together. He made sure that he was, you know, eating the right things he was supposed to be eating, getting his protein or working out and going to the practices when, when he needed to go because he knew a day was going to come just like here in this scripture. Remember I told you in Isaiah 60, God was preparing them. And now in 61, he's saying, okay, it's time to go. It's time to get up. I'm, it, it's here now. This is the time. And so I really appreciated the fact that my son was so dedicated to that. And because of that, I want to support him. You know, I want to do whatever it is I can to, to help him, whether it be going to one or two of his games or whatever, when, it, when they have their home games, amen, or, or, or um, buying him things that he needs to assist him. And so that's what God is saying here is that, you know, he, he favors us. We're the favor. Amen. And so when you favor someone, you're going to support them. You're going to do the things that, that need to be done for them to be able to push the mission. So God says, because I favor them, my God, y'all got to, y'all got to catch this. I'm going down to, um, in verse three is where he's talking about what he's going to do. So he said, God says, because I favor them, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, my God, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. In other words, or that they may be made strong. Because here, the reason why he's using trees of righteousness is because a tree is something that we view as strong. Its roots run deep. Amen. It, a, 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 a strong wind, if its roots run really deep and it's a nice sized tree, a strong wind is not going to make that tree knock over. Um, and I even like in the New Living translation because it talks about oak, an uh, oak tree and an oak tree is a very strong tree, right? And so it talks about 
um, how he's going to give them beauty for ashes. He's going to give them the oil of joy for mourning. And we're so we're in a time where so many people have been grieving. They've been mourning, not just a, a physical grieving because of the, the physical loss that we've experienced, but even a spiritual grieving has been happening. Amen. There's been a lot of moaning and groaning in the spirit. And so the Lord is saying now is the time of the Lord where I'm going to um, I'm going to allow these things to happen for the people that I favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me, let me get an amen. Hallelujah. In the chat, something talk back to me, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. There's been such a spirit of heaviness um, that has really uh, uh, plagued the church uh, as a whole. Um, and so God is saying in this time that now, since it is the, it, my time, amen, now my will is going to be made manifest. My will is going to be made manifest in the earth. And guess what my will is? My will is that the favored would come forth, that the favored would be revealed. That's the reason why I read to you um, what I read earlier is that it's now your time because God wants to reveal who you are. God wants to reveal what you, what's needed in the earth and he's going to do it through his people. Amen. So it's the year of the Lord's favor. And guess what? We're his favor. That's like you when you do something, um, when you do something for somebody else, but it's your birthday. Amen. And so I love how God says that in the time, the acceptable year of the Lord, I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to uh, do something for the favored ones. And in verse four, it says, and they shall build. My God, I don't, I don't even need to go any further than that. I just want to stop right there. And verse four says, and they shall build. So the Lord is not only going to strengthen you, because remember I said the tree of righteousness was saying that he was coming to make you strong. So not only is the Lord going to strengthen, but you will build. What will you build? You will build your city. You will build your family. You will build your ministry. You will build your business. He's going to build you. Amen. But he said, first, I had to come strengthen you. My God, first, I had to come fortify you. First, I had to come do something in you. I had to come impart something in you. I love how when Paul addresses, anytime he addressed anybody in his letters, he always addressed them with an exhortation. He always encouraged them. And he said, there was this one time where he said, I long to see you so I can impart some spiritual gift in you. So I can impart some special uh, blessing unto you. And that's what God is saying here is that I'm fortifying you. I'm making you strong. I'm building you up so that you can build. First, I need to build you so you can go build. Hallelujah. He said, and they shall build. The Lord is going to strengthen. He's going to build. He's going to fortify the city. He's going to fortify your family. Um, there are a lot of families that have been uh, in a place of division and separation over a lot of different political issues that have been going on in our land. He says, no more. He says, I'm not going to allow this thing to separate my people any longer. And when he says my people, he's talking about the chosen ones. If you want to know who my people are and who they're talking about in the scripture, you need to draw Join my husband's live on Tuesday nights when the prophet speaks and he'll tell you who the people are um, because this particular verse of scripture is actually this whole entire chapter and 60 is talking about a specific people. Amen. And so he says, I'm going to build the city. I'm going to build the land. I'm going to build the family and I don't want the families to be divided anymore. Yes, the word does say that mothers and daughters will be against each other and fathers and sons, but there's also a place in the word where it says they will be reunited. Come on, somebody. And in the time of the year of the Lord, the acceptable year of the Lord is when God's word is going to be revealed because no matter what happens, we're going to come together in unity and the world is going to look at the church and be like, how did they, how did they do that? They should be upset with each other. They should be fussing at each other. They should be arguing and fighting at each other because this, that, and any other. But God is going to reveal himself because he's going to allow us to, he's going to allow amending to happen amending to take place. We're going to begin to come together no matter if we don't like each other, no matter if we just got through arguing yesterday. The world is getting ready to see the family dynamic come together and the ministries come together and the businesses come together for his glory, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And verse five says, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks 
And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. My God, strangers shall come and feed your flocks. What does that mean? It means that people that you don't even know are getting ready to just come and sow onto you, are going to bless you. You're going to, you're, you're going to be operating in your gift because remember the Lord has already called you forth. He's already said, now I'm, I'm strengthening you. I'm fortifying you. Now you shall build. Guess what's going to happen when you build? People are going to come. People are going to follow. People are going to invest. And there are going to be people that you don't even know, people that have never even followed you that are going to begin to come and invest. Strangers are going to stand and feed your flocks. My God. And that, that, also, uh, that also is saying that when they feed your flocks, not only are they going to give money unto you, but feeding your flocks is also saying they're going to basically share about what you're doing with others. My God. They're going to share what you're doing about other, with, to others, to the flocks. Hallelujah, which are going to bring more people unto you. And so a lot of times we get so worried about how it's all going to play out, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to do it. We don't have all the instructions yet. Sometimes you can't have all the instructions yet. Sometimes you just have to launch. You just have to start what God is telling you to do. And then the rest of the revelation of that thing is going to begin to unfold. And when you do that, people are going to sow. People are going to come. People are going to do things. But they, they can't do that. Unless you start, my God. And so the Lord is saying in the time, in this time, which is the, which is the year of the acceptable year and the favor of the Lord, I am going to allow you to uh, be uh, purposeful in this time. Because a lot of times we think that, oh, well, this is supposed to be my purpose over here, but I see God is trying to do something else. But everything that God tells you to do is going to be uh, made of purpose. Hallelujah. So that doesn't mean you have to only do this one thing or be dedicated to this one thing. But God is saying that when you begin to launch forth, when you begin to be revealed and uncovered, that people are going to stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowman and your vine dresser. My God, what that is essentially saying is that even those that didn't believe on your faith, even those that didn't believe on your faith are now going to be coming and they're going to be your plowman. They're going to be your vine dressers. They're going to they're going to literally have those that moment, that transitional moment that Paul had from Saul to Paul. Remember, he remember Paul was the one that was persecuting the Christians at one point. And so right here, the God is saying the sons of the aliens, the sons of the of the of the uh, slave masters. Come on, somebody. The sons of the aliens are going to begin to come and believe on what it is that you're doing. And they're going to be your plowmen and your vine dressers. They're going to be the ones that are going to come and support what you're doing because they're going to see that what you have is truly from God. My God, somebody. So you have to come out in this time, says the Lord. Verse six. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of God. We're going to stop right there. Ye shall be named the priests of the Lord and the ministers of God. A lot of times when we read stuff like that, we're like, oh, my God, but I'm not doing this right. And I'm not doing that right. And, and I'm not, you know, uh, and, and it's OK, because a lot of times we think that because we cross all our T's and dot all our I's, that then that that's when we can become these labels a priest of the Lord and a minister of God. But the Bible says that all have fall short of his glory. All have sinned and fall short of his glory. What your responsibility is in that moment is to acknowledge the sin and repent. Amen. Repentance is still available. Repentance. This is the hour of the repentance. Amen. And so when you begin to get up and repent, you are still going to be a priest of God. You are still going to be a minister of God. Hallelujah. And so that's what the, the Lord, it doesn't matter at this time what, what you were called once before or what you did once before. This is what God is saying, who you are now. And ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So this means whatever you used to be, whatever you used to do, it won't even matter. It won't even hinder what God wants to do in this time because it is the time of his favor. When it's the time of his favor, it doesn't matter what your credit score looks like. When it's the time of his favor, it doesn't matter who you used to date, who you used to hang out with, what you used to smoke, what you used to drink. When it's the time of the Lord's favor, those things no longer matter. Though, As a matter of fact, those things are a building of the testimony. Those things are the things that are going to draw those people that God wants to reach. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what they used to call you. It doesn't matter what you used to be. It matters that God's time in his favor says you are a priest. 
You are priests of God. You are ministers of God. You are priests of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God is going to get the glory out of your story. Come on, somebody. God is going to get the glory out of your story. It's for his time. It's for his favor. Hallelujah. That is how God gets glorified in the earth. God doesn't get glorified in the earth when somebody who was born from money is making money. Come on, somebody. God doesn't get glorified in the earth when somebody that comes from a rich family is doing all these great things and they're famous and auntie. Okay. That's, that's expected. God gets the glory out of the meek. God gets the glory out of the poor in spirit. God gets the glory out of those that were raped and abused and molested. God gets the glory out of those people who he, who were called all these sorts of names that were everything but a child of God. He gets the glory out of people like that. My God, he gets the glory out of a wretched man like me, as the song would say. Hallelujah. So he wants eyes to be open, ears to be open in this time and ultimately mouths to be open, speaking and declaring the word of the Lord. We are priests of the Lord. We are ministers of God and we shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall we boast yourselves. Now this boast right here is not a boast like, oh, I'm conceited. I'm all of that kind of boast. But this is a boast in the Lord because the Lord wants to impart something in us that we didn't have before. Oh my God, that's good. He wants to impart something in us so that we can be um, relevant, amen, in this time to people who have been listening to a tired word so that we can be relevant in this time to people who have been listening to false doctrine, to people who have been swayed by itching ears and going to and fro, hearing all types of cliche sayings, but nothing's really happening. No power is really being exerted. And so this boast is that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and signs, wonders, and miracles can begin to happen. Amen. Anybody need signs, wonders, and miracles to begin to happen in their life? Because he didn't just do it in this time. He's doing it now. What he did back then, he's going to do it again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to verse seven. For your shame, ye shall have double. My God. Ooh, this blessed me when I read this. And it said, for your shame, ye shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. This is beautiful. So what God is saying right here is that in your shameful state, hallelujah, the shameful state that you were in, you remember that time when you were homeless for a while and you didn't want nobody to know? You remember that time when you didn't have enough money to buy groceries for your house? You didn't want nobody to know? You remember that time when your car ran out of gas? You had to take the bus. You didn't want nobody. Come on, somebody. You said your car was in the shop, but you knew your car ran out of gas. You didn't want nobody to know. And see, he said, so when those times when you were shameful, when you were trying to hide your face, he said, I'm giving you double. Shut up. Yet he and the So I'm giving you double for those things that you went through. Double for your trouble. Double for the things that you had to endure. Double for when people came and stabbed you in the back. When they had ill motives against you. You thought they was your best friend and they sleeping with your man. Double for your shame. Double for your trouble is what the Lord said he's bringing in this time of the Lord. And for the confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double in their land, in their land, in their God's given you land. He's given you property. He's given you a place that you shall receive the possession. My God, he says in their land, they shall possess the double. God is getting ready to bring things that are owed to his people. He's getting ready to bring land that are owed to his people. Again, I admonish you to check out Tuesday night so you can find out who the people are. But God says in this time, he's going to allow you to possess that which is yours. Not only will you possess that which is yours, but you're going to possess double. My God. And he says, everlasting joy shall be unto them. Jesus. There have been so many times where you have cried and you have prayed and you have cried and you felt like God did not hear you. You have cried and you have cried and you have even uh, talked to people about the things that were on your heart, the burdens that were on your heart, the things that you had to endure. And it seemed like nobody understood. But God said, I have seen every tear. Hallelujah. And I have understood the things that you have gone through. I have understood the despair. As a matter of fact, God said, I even allowed you to go through some of that. That stuff. I even allowed some of those things to happen for to you. You don't believe me? Go look at Job's story. Job allowed, God allowed Job to go through those things. Have you tried my servant Job? Plug your name into that scripture. Have you tried my servant Dweller? 
Have you tried my servant, Kevin? That is the thing that God does in order for glory to be manifested in the time of his favor so that when his favor come forth, people will see and know that it had to be a miracle. They will know that it had to be God. He said, I'm going to give you everlasting joy for those times that you were saddened, everlasting joy for those times that you were hurt, everlasting joy for those times that you were angry and bitter and disgusted with your life. Everlasting joy shall be unto you, says the Lord. This is the time. And even as we're going through a, a, a very devastating political error, God is saying that the church is getting ready to be blessed beyond measure. Even though it looks like the economy is crashing, the, the church, my God, the worshipers, those who will worship me in spirit and in truth are beginning to rise up in this hour. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're on God's kingdom economy. That is the reason why we can rejoice in this time. That is the reason why we can have everlasting joy. That is the reason why we can hold our head up, not up high and not be shameful. Why? Because we know we're getting ready to receive double. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Verse eight. Verse eight. It says, for I, the Lord, love judgment. So I hate robbery for burnt offering and I will direct their work in truth and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Now you have to understand this thing about covenant that God continued. This was, this was a thing that an ongoing thing that just kept teeter tottering throughout scripture where God was, was do had made a covenant with his people and they would do good for a while, but then they fall off. And then they do good for a while, and then they fall off. It's just like a big roller coaster ride, just continuing to happen um, through time. And so, hear what the Lord is saying that this time, shoo, it's going to be established. This time, the covenant is going to be everlasting and it's going to be established. Amen. You're not going to fall off no more. Amen. You're not going to sway away anymore. This time, you're going to be all in. You're going to be all in for I, the Lord, love judgment. What God is talking about here is the judgment of those who uh, were against you. The judgment of those who persecuted the saints, the judgment of those who persecuted you for his glory. My God. Hallelujah. We've been troubled on every side. She, I hate robbery of, uh, for burnt offering. And so that is really literally saying that those things that were stolen, those things that were taken away from God's people, those things that people tried to go around the corner, they try to take the easy way uh, to get into the presence. Uh, they try to take the easy way to say that they were favored of the Lord. They try to take the easy way and, and write some things out and say, oh, no, that's not this is not for them. This is for me. Y'all remember about the birthright, right? Come on, somebody. God hates that. He said, I love judgment. And I will judge. And so, so there's two things that are happening that are going to, it's a parallel that's happening right now at the same time that God is getting ready to release these blessings and release these things that he's given to us, this everlasting covenant. He's also judging a people who have not been the people. He's judging a people who have not listened, who have not done anything that he said, who have not listened to his decrees and his law, who, who were, who were actually trying to uh, benefit off of something that belonged to you. My God, those people that were trying to benefit off of something that belonged to you, you know who I'm talking about. The ones who have those ill motives, the ones who, who, who act like, you know, they're your friend. Oh, they support you and all this. But as soon as you really get somewhere, as soon as you really start doing something, as soon as you really begin to take off and start launching, now they talking all kind of stuff about you. My God, help me Holy Ghost. It says, and I will direct, I, I feel my husband pulling on me right now, y'all. I will direct their work in truth. I will direct their work in truth. And so right here is, is really the meat of this whole thing is that God wants to reveal his truth in this time. Amen. The Lord gave us the name spirit of uh, spirit of truth ministries because the spirit of truth is literally going throughout the earth looking for those who have the truth of his word and are not trying to uh, form it and shape it to what they want it to say, who are not trying to form it and shape it to what makes them feel good about themselves, who are trying to form it and shape it to make it like, you know, they're not, they're not doing um, uh, anything contrary to what God has said. 
when it's exactly what they're doing. And God is saying, my spirit is literally going throughout the earth. So you so so all you have seen this entire time is you say that, oh, yeah, we know that the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. But guess what? There is a spirit of the Lord that supersedes what, what the enemy is trying to do. And he's seeking those who want his truth revealed. That is why this ministry preaches truth. That is why this ministry tells you what the love of God truly is and not the lust of this world. There is literally a thing called the spirit of the world. Go look it up. It's in scripture. The spirit of the world. But we don't have the spirit of the world. Amen. And so those that don't have the spirit of the world, this is for you. Verse nine. And their seed. And this is where I'm going to stop today. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Y'all listen, listen. And their seed shall be known. I'm going to stop right there. Why do you think the enemy is after your children so much? Why do you think he continues to play with their mind? Why do you think they experience all the peer pressure and all of the things that they go through? It is because of the fact that, first of all, the enemy knows who we are. And then the seed, it says, shall be known among them, their offspring among the people. And so the power that God has put in us, my God, as parents, as grandparents, as aunties, as uncles, it flows from the head down. And even even the seed shall supersede that which the parent does. The seed shall supersede that which the father does, what the mother does. Amen. And so that means they're going to be even more powerful. So, of course, they're going to, going to get hit with all of these blows because what they carry is more powerful. What they carry is unto the next generation. So so it's our job to continue to plead the blood over them. It's our job to continue to speak good things over them, even when they get on your last nerve. Yes, correct them, but it's also our job to tell them who they are. And all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. And that's not just talking about that seed. It's talking about us. Hallelujah. All that see them shall acknowledge them. My God shall acknowledge them. And I even since there's, there's been a lot of you that felt like you that nobody acknowledged you. There was so much that you did. And, and I believe that's the reason why the Lord wanted me to read the, um, the the newsletter that I read earlier, because you you thought that stuff went unnoticed that nobody noticed it. Nobody noticed those things that you did. But God saw it. And because God saw it, that's all that matters. Sometimes we want we want recognition. We want these awards and we want all of this stuff that don't mean nothing to God. But when God is the rewarder, when he is the one that says, now I want to bring my favorite forth. That's the thing that matters, because guess what? Now you're going to be acknowledged among all people, among everyone. Hallelujah. Let God be your platform. Let him make your platform. Hallelujah. And so for those that have not received the spirit of the world and those who are of Christ, covenant people, favored of God. He says, now is the time. Now is your time. Not only is, is it the acceptable year of the Lord, but it is also your time. That is what that means. And I even believe the Lord is saying this also applies to those who may be hearing this for the first time and don't even know the Lord as their savior. You can also be in this. It doesn't mean that because you didn't know before and you weren't doing all these things, you weren't keeping the covenant. You know, you weren't keeping the law. You weren't keeping the command so that his plan could come into fruition. It doesn't mean that you can't still get this because you can. And so I'm going to offer a salvation. Amen. To those that may not even have known about this, I'm going to offer salvation to you. And I encourage you to begin to read your word. I encourage you to get, get connected to a church that's teaching a sound doctrine. Amen. Teaching the word of God so that you can be established, so that you can be strengthened like an oak tree, that you can be fortified and that you can begin to build. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the way that this works is through prayer. You can invite Jesus into your heart. 
to become your personal Lord and Savior. And even in that, I want everybody to pray this because even in that, some of us may have backslid. Some of us need to repent. Some of us need to rededicate so that we can make sure that we know that we know that we know that this is going to apply to us, that we're going to receive this kingdom blessing. Amen. So we're going to invite him into our heart. In Romans 10 and 10, it says, for with the heart, the man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And also you can find in Romans 10 and 13 that for, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So I want everyone to pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. I acknowledge you as Lord and I want to live for you. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. I thank you, Lord, for helping me to do better, to do what pleases you, to do what honors you, and ultimately to do your will. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Hallelujah. As my husband would say, if you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. It's just that simple, it's just that easy. If you want continual prayer, you can always email us. Um, and if you want to be a partner with us, Amen. Uh, you'll have we'll have information right after this for how you can be a partner. But I just believe this is really a time where we need to continually, daily. Paul said, "I die daily." So continually, every day, just repent and rededicate. Repent and rededicate, because we want to make sure that in the time of the Lord's favor, that favor that we don't miss anything, that we don't miss the mark whatsoever, because God wants to impart these things into us. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. God bless y'all. Um, make sure that you uh, come back, invite a friend. Uh, when we're on next Saturday, invite a friend to not only this, but to our prayer call, because prayer is also very needed in this hour. This is, inten this is a very intense time where we need to press in like never before. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Spirit of Truth Ministries is committed to sharing God's love and truth to the world. And your gift, no matter how big or small, is significant. You can give to the ministry by one of three ways. First, you can go to our website, www.sotrr.com, and click on Give. Second, you can give via Givelify. Just open the app on your mobile device and search for Spirit of Truth Round Rock. Or you can send your contribution via Cash App by entering the Cash App handle of dollar sign SOTRR. Become a partner and give a donation to the ministry so we can continue to bring the gospel of Christ to the nations. Thank you in advance and we appreciate your donations, prayers, and support.